What if the protagonist from Blue Lock had his own leveling system, similar to that of Sung Jin Woo? How would that affect the story and his growth, making him grow effortlessly and gaining immense strength? Becoming a world-class player with this leveling system could be done with ease. Hi, my name is Zero, and this is What If Yoichi Isagi Had a Leveling System. Now, let's get started. Get that paper, so they glock that how we live. Yeah, my life's a game, I pray I don't get killed. They can't believe I got the guac, this shit for real. Can't accept the fact my brother gone, I wanna kill. Yeah, I can't go for that, that shit don't sit right. Get a cabin to the old nigga, I know what you live like. I ain't worried about all just for the hoes and live life. I grown a drill, I'm smart enough, you gotta know how to kill. Yoichi Isagi's childhood was marked by the brutal Red Zone Project. A secret initiative that snatched children from orphanages for intense training and simulations to mold a football prodigy for Japan. As part of this crucial program, he was one of the hundreds of children who was forced to undergo a surgery, wherein a microchip was connected to the brain and its nervous system, allowing for more information to be stored within it. But this process could only be successful so many times. Many children came out of the surgery just fine, but many did not make it. With the ones who survived, well, they began to grow up in the Red Zone Project as robots. No emotions, no fun, just solely football and the goal to become the very best. This microchip still could cause many problems while the kids began growing up, but soon their numbers began to thin out. This hellish training could only be withstood by a few. Years continue to pass until we see that Yoichi Isagi was the sole survivor of this project. The government of Japan would find out about it and shut it down. However, before they arrived, the doctor of the facility activated Isagi's microchip in his brain, causing immense pain. When he was found, he was unconscious and then woke up in the hospital. They asked what had happened, but the boy had no memory or recollection of anything. With this, the government of Japan was able to hide this horrible truth from the public because Isagi was the only survivor and still being a kid made it much easier. Since he didn't have any family or a place to go, he was sent to another, better orphanage where he'd be adopted by a business family. At first, he's seen as their heir to the business that they were doing. Someone who could be very successful. Well... Both of his parents were pretty strict. Isagi would do this until he's reintroduced to football. And this happens by chance one day as Isagi was with his friends. In this moment, Isagi's head started to hurt just a little bit. And he moved without thought. Heading to the field, stealing the ball from a player that had been in the practice match. Isagi then starts to dribble, spitting around him as in front of him, was another player, but then a screen would appear. Welcome player. Isagi kind of looks around as it seems that time has slowed down and he's the only one that could see this screen. Isagi then goes on to destroy his defenders and score a goal, leading to a quest being complete and a level of rewards being given to him. Getting around to level five from this, Isagi then sits down, seeing another screen. Of course, this confuses him as he doesn't even know what he's looking at and the others around him still can't see it. The coach for his school team then calls him amazing, asking how long he's played football for. But Isagi says he doesn't know. This throws off the adult. And he asked if Isagi wanted to try out for the team tomorrow in their next practice. Isagi thinks about it as the season hasn't started, but he believes that he'll be a great addition to the team. So he would nod going home and telling his parents, but they were angry. Football has never been successful in Japan, and that's what he wants to do with his free time? They were already money hungry and only wanted to continue their business to grow it further into an empire. But Isagi told them he had no desire to do so. Football is connected to his past, and he wants to learn out why he is the way he is. Isagi tries out the next day and of course makes the team, but the entire day, all he can think of was a daily quest he was given 
and what happened after he completed it. The first thing he decides to do when looking around at his stats was to upgrade his mental. His available stats look something like this, with speed, stamina, power, defense, and dribbling available to upgrade. But by upgrading his intellect, this allowed him to understand the system better. Using it, he makes a plan to take over the world of football. If his parents don't believe it to be successful as a job, then he will make it one. Throughout the next years, Isagi would grow rapidly to the point where he begins to get onto Japan's radar as the youngest prodigy. As at 12 years old, he was offered to play in a club team in England. So he goes there, playing up in age actually for the 14U team. Working his way up to becoming their start, well, their starting striker. The world of football does take note of him after he scores a winning goal in the tournament. But that's not all. When returning to Japan for the holidays, he runs into a young Itoshi Sai who says that he's impressive and asks, well, tells him, if he continues to grow like this, then he'll be the striker that he wants to support with his passes. Itagi seeing him gets flashbacks to that red room. It was strange. His hair almost caused a flashback, but maybe it was more than that. His statement of becoming the best and winning a World Cup together. Isagi then hears the younger voices of other children saying the same thing. He's able to then recover, stating that he will become the savior of their home country. Sai walks away, wishing him luck on his journey as he'll need it. Returning back to England, Isagi goes on to win tournaments with his solo goals, leveling up during each day. Years continue to pass, with Isagi at age 14, as he's also known as a new Gen 11 player. But this was a whole nother version of the group, with Isagi actually starting the second wave of young players who were prodigies, because there already was a new Gen 11 by the time he was that age. So, him and also Charles began the second group. Still, the others couldn't help but notice that even though he was only 14, he was taller than most kids. And he packed on a little bit more muscle. His play style was angelic, with no flaws in his football, as it was second to none in his age group. We get to see him back in action during a summer tournament where he completely outclasses everyone. He's seen in a three-on-one situation where he breaks down two defenders and drops the last one to the ground. Scoring yet another goal, he doesn't even celebrate, only thinking to himself. Since I've unlocked Metal Vision, my skills have seen an insane increase. We then get a look at Isagi's stats to see that they were boosted by using Metal Vision, and he's on the verge of having an A in everything. When he goes to his skills, he sees that Metal Vision was currently only at level 20, with his direct shot at 40 and different dribble moves around the same level. With this, his overall level was 38. As Isagi claims, this all to be fun, but he has a job to finish. He will continue the tournament to yet another win. This is where he decides to leave the club and England, thanking this country and its people for their support. As on the way back to Japan, he gets a call from his adopted father who asked what team he was going to play for. But Isagi will decide on that on a later date. He plans to head into his own training. As he gets off the plane in Japan's airport and has his driver check him into a luxury hotel that was already paid for by his father. Isagi now looks at the quest that pops up in front of him that says enter Blue Lock. But this one didn't have a time limit on it as he wondered what Blue Lock actually was. This is when he began asking around to find out what the project was, and he figures out that it was to create a perfect striker for Japan. Isagi seeing it on a poster gets a horrible memory that's much clearer than the other ones that he's had, as he could see the other kids now screaming in agony from their day-to-day training, as he wakes back up crying. But this was strange, as he now sees that he was even closer to his goal. He heads for Blue Lock. He uses his influence to get much closer to the Football Association chairman who gets him in contact with Jampachi Ego. When walking into the room, the man will try to introduce him to Ego, who tells him to shut up. 
He knows very well who this is. Yoichi Isagi, a child prodigy who dominated in Japan for a little bit and then flew away, going to dominate in England's football with his angelic and graceful playstyle. As he's known as the fallen angel of England. So what do we owe this great honor? Isagi tells him to quit the formalities and small talk as he wishes to join Blue Lock, as he believes it's connected to his past. Ego smiles from ear to ear, believing that Isagi was the perfect person to give those other unpolished gems a real challenge. By this time, the first selection was over, and the test to complete the 100 shots was still going on. As Isagi entered towards the middle of that, walking into a room to see all sorts of players. What's strange is that Isagi could see a player sitting on his own. His purple hair made him stand out. But why did he look so depressed? Seeing him like this reminded Isagi of the children from his past, so he approached him, introducing himself. Ryo reveals to him that he was left by his own friend. So he tells him to go away. But Isagi can tell that he has a goal in his mind. So why not achieve that goal alongside someone who will fight beside him? Ryo looks up as the light around Isagi is so bright. He can't help but think of playing football with him. But where was he in the first election? And why does his face seem so familiar? Nevertheless, he joins. And now they needed a third teammate. Isagi looks around finding Yo Hayori. With this, the three of them can now move on to the next stage, as this is where they would face off against a team of three, made up of Kunigami, Chigiri, and Raichi. The thing about this is that Isagi here completely outclasses everyone on the field. They can't even touch him because of how strong he is, as the system gives him a request to defeat his current opponents. The match does begin with Isagi showing off his dribbling, maneuvering around his opponents with ease, as it catches Kunigami and Raichi off guard, leading to him being wide open. Chigiri will try to stop him with his speed, but Isagi increases and decreases his own in rapid succession. These quick changes in pace tear down the speedster, leading to the first goal being scored, with many more after that due to the unique passes from Ryo and Hayori. Ryo actually couldn't believe it. This guy may be even more talented than Nagi, and his passion to win a World Cup was reignited right here. Before they move on, Isagi is given a message for a bonus reward if he gets Raichi on his team, so he takes them and gains a couple more levels, adding skill points to some of his abilities and his strength. The next team that they would face was led by Karasu, as he was the only familiar face. They're then defeated, and the system tells him to bring Karasu, so he does, as now their team of five was ready to face the World Five, which was strange, because as they did enter a match against the players from all across the world, they were shocked to see England's very own fallen angel in Japan. They had heard the rumors, but this was shocking. Isagi looks on ahead, seeing one of his mentors and Adam Blake, greeting his former teacher with the respect. He thanks him for all that he's done for him. This causes the players on the other, well, on the World 5, to then look at Blake with curiosity, not knowing that he takes on students. He claimed that he doesn't, but this boy was a special case due to that certain man making the request. Isagi, don't hold back in this match. I want to see for myself if leaving England was the right choice for you. Isagi nods. As when this match begins, he heads right up the field, heading right for his teacher. Cavazos tells him not to get ahead of himself, but Isagi flicks the ball around him, heading to the side. His mentor commends him, but guards him close, asking what he really desires from Blue Lock. Isagi uses his own body to shield the ball, passing to Hayori, telling him to give it to Ryo. Once the ball reaches its target, Ryo has to make a decision. Should he really give the ball to Isagi? or to Karasu, who was more open. Isagi then makes his move, not even looking back, causing Ryo to come to the conclusion that Isagi expects the ball from him. This type of pressure sent chills down his spine, but it was something that he had never felt before, and he loves the thrill of it. So he sends the ball that way, with Isagi jumping in the air to meet one of England's greats, 
only to watch Isagi bicycle kick it into the net, stating that he's not done yet. He then falls to the ground, with this new skill being added to the game, as the system recognizes his growth. Awakening now a lot at level 1. Flow. Adam Blake looks down at Isagi, seeing his eyes focus on the ball and his aura changing. I see. So this is the resolve that Blue Lock has instilled within you. Then show me the fruits of your labor. Isagi's flow state here was represented by a white aura with wings, almost like an angel, or even a kind of ruler from solo leveling. During this match against the World 5, Isagi goes off, scoring three goals but ultimately losing the match. Still, being able to unlock the flow state and level it up in this match was incredible. Isagi then sits down, wondering if he could do this regularly. But then, when looking back at the awakening description, he only has five minutes with it for now, and his former teacher wishes him luck, as now, the five of them would head to the next stage, where Ego explains how luck and the flow state begin to work. Now they did have some time, and this is where Blue Lock challenges the U-20 Japan team, who brings in Itoshi Sai to play for them, as he's also curious about the striker that Blue Lock will try and produce. The U-20 team actually reaches out to Isagi asking if he wanted to play, but he declined, saying that he'll win this match on the side of Blue Lock. So of course they have their matches within Blue Lock to decide who the starting lineup would be, with Isagi paired with Rin, and the two work well together, which was surprising. Isagi actually has played with a player similar to Rin, so all he does is let Rin think that he's dominating, while Isagi does the real work in scoring. Still, when it comes down to picking the team, Isagi is selected to be the main striker, and Ryo is actually starting over to Nagi, due to his work with Isagi. But during their short arc, Isagi was able to level up the flow state to level 20, making him basically able to turn it on with ease, and his meta vision also levels up to the point where it becomes a passive ability. Which is actually funny here, as Shido will remain on Blue Lock's team. He just won't be on the starting lineup or the backup squad. As during the preparation arc, he was paired with Nagi, but with them both having a similar style. The two fed off each other's energy quite well. Still, when the time does come for the match, Isagi is seen suiting up in his jersey that has the number one on it. Fits nicely. He then stands up, leading his team out into the hallway, where they're greeted by Itoshi Sai. It's been a while, hasn't it? Yes, it has. I'm surprised you're here in Blue Lock. Are you really? Well, what if I told you I'd like you to join this as well after this match. Sai actually says the same with him, wanting Isagi to come with Spain instead of going to England. They would make a bet here before walking out to the excited fans. When it starts, Isagi begins running ahead, being marked in the midfield, but the system gives them a new quest. Beat the U-20 team. Isagi jumps in the air, trapping a pass to the chest and then turning back to see two defenders. He then drops the ball off to the wing, where Shigiri runs to get it. Still, pressing forward, Blue Lock's egoists get close to goal, but Isagi is guarded closely by Aiku. The captain of the team claims this to be as far as he gets, but instantly, Isagi activates the flow state, with those same wings appearing behind him and the glow in his eyes from MetaVision. Get out of my way! Ryo, who had the ball, looked up seeing Isagi and doubted his abilities. Could he make the type of pass needed for an early goal? This also caused Ryo to awaken further, sending a perfect missile pass to Isagi that was threaded through defenders. He then moves as he turns his body, trapping it and going by Aiku to score. This link up between the two of them was perfect and they could both feel it. Each entered a new level of football. Still, Aiku and Sai were determined to go for the win and a counter in the next play, as a U-20 striker Sendo wouldn't be able to deliver a tying goal, leading to a blue lock counter, getting the ball to Rio once again, where many defenders would try and stop him until getting to Sai, where he sends the ball over him, and it gets to Isagi. 
trapping it. He knows that Aiku was guarding him once again, but Isagi bodies him away and then gets a volley that curves above the keeper into the top corner. That was already two goals back to back that threw Blue Lock into an early lead, but it wasn't over as Sai would score the next goal from a corner kick. The players we know and love, well, they weren't worried as Ryo and Isagi began to take over this match time and time again. With the World Cup on both of their minds, they were in sync perfectly. Even when coming out of the half, the two of them continued to dominate, leading to a win, and Isagi being awarded a new passive skill that allows him to link up with teammates even better. As now there was just a short break in the period between the time of the next arc, and during that time Isagi went to the National Football Association of Japan, where he tries to find out something for himself that being his past. But after asking around, he finds nothing. This is when he would turn a corner, running into Jinpachi Ego. You won't find what you're looking for here. If this so-called project is connected to your past, they'll do anything to hide it. Because I'm assuming you're the only survivor, as this would make those idiots look bad. But if you gain power in the world of football, they'll have no choice but to reveal it. So. Become even more successful, Yoichi Isagi. Isagi then leaves, and Blue Lock's second phase would soon begin, with the players from the U20 team also arriving. We see Itoshi Sai keeping his word, stating that whatever team Isagi joins, he'll be going there as well. As Ryo actually says the same, abandoning Nagi here because he's done the same to him. Isagi tells both of them that he already has a sight set on one place alone when Ego mentions it as they would enter England's wing, and before the master can reveal himself, Isagi walks towards the stage. It's been a while, Isagi. Chris Prince shows himself, shocking everyone that the two would know each other, and then, their past is explained. Isagi was found by Chris Prince while he played in England and was taken under his wing, learning from his mentor in every way possible and also being trained by English stars like Adam Blake. With all of this now being revealed, the way people look at Isagi began to change. To them, he was already in a league of his own. But hearing this, this information, it solidifies it. Sai comments how it's funny that the two of them are more similar than he expected. But now their training under the Master Striker will begin. Isagi's training was still focused on maximizing his output as a striker. And now having the flow state, he wanted to fully master that. As well as some new shot techniques that would put him in the world-class level. Knowing the danger that he would have to face against the other teams, Isagi took this training very seriously. And what was scary is that all of Manchai's team has incredible potential. So Isagi, having the ability to raise the strength of others around him, heightened the results of their training. The first match would soon arrive as his bastard Munkin versus Manchai City. New Gen 11 player, Michael Kaiser makes himself known alongside Alexis Ness. But here is the problem. Germany doesn't have the defense at all to stop England's players, let alone their fallen angel, Isagi. When the match begins, it's clear how far it will go with Itoshi Sai destroying the midfielders and now looking to pass. Germany man marks Isagi, but he still receives the ball, trapping it perfectly as Raichi will be the one guarding him, claiming that he was weaker. but. He then realizes that he can't move him. It's like he's trying to push against a building. All of a sudden, Isagi spins around him while having a smile on his face and then shoots the ball right by the head of Gagamaru. He had no time to react to this shot as he had no wind-up time and it was on the weak side of our favorite goalkeeper. Itoshi Sai tells Kaiser that he no longer remains at the top as God's chosen emperor. Kaiser would be annoyed by this, of course and wanted to counter. But if I'm being real, they can't. It's almost similar to the Uber's defense. With so many monsters on their team, even if they weren't the best at defense, their physical abilities had made up for it. Leading to a counter where Ryo is seen dribbling the ball around Ness, making him angry, and then sending a pass towards Shigiri, who then runs for it, aiming to go for his 44 Panther shot, but it's then blocked by Kunigami. Damn it, you dark hero. Kira is the one to recover it, but what stood in his way was Itoshi Sai, who would steal it, 
now facing Kaiser. The two players from the new Gen 11 are facing off right here. It's spectacular to watch the back and forth between them in an intense battle where Sai shows off his ability to truly read the field, getting the ball to Isagi, who would score once again, giving them a 2-0 lead, making it clear to this team that they were on a completely different level. Noel Noah even states that the combination of Sai and Isagi was scary, as he honestly could only think of a few ways to stop them. This match was basically set in stone with the victory of course going to England with a 3-1 win. What's even crazier is in their match against Paris, it was even more amazing. The battle between the two brothers is able to be seen here, as Sai and Ren can go all out, but Ren still falls short. And the only reason I say this is due to Sai's intense training here, especially with England and Manshine City. With the system being active within Isagi, his level continues to grow, as well as his abilities. With that being shown in the match against France, even with everything that they have in the defense, Charles, Zantetsu, Tokimitsu, Karasu, Nanase, Choppy, and even Rin, no one could stop him. This match will be even closer though, coming down to a final goal between, well, two people, Isagi or Shido, where our demon causes a reawakening in Isagi. This allows him to pass his current limitations and enter a new world of football. With the system updating him to giving him a new title, Master Striker, as when he accepts it during the match, his stamina is replenished, as well as all of his stats reaching the S class. And now, adding all of this up, Isagi is able to score the final goal, and now England goes undefeated in the Neo Egoist League. As at the end of it all, Isagi finds out about the Red Zone project, which makes him angry. The association says they have nothing to do with it, but of course they would, as they were the ones to cut off the doctor and actually change their ways. But they can't disclose any of this information to the public, and Isagi doesn't plan to. Finally, knowing where he comes from, he promises to become the very best in the world for the kids within the Red Zone project that didn't make it out alive. As this is where our story ends. And I hope you guys did enjoy it, as this was a one-shot idea. And I figured I didn't want to draw this out as a series. And it was really fun to write. As I did enjoy Isagi having a leveling system. And it does make him pretty OP, but I think that's the whole point of this. If you do like content like this and want to see more of it on my channel, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss my next upload. This is Zero, and I'll catch you all on the next one.